Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our JALT 2020 online conference. This presentation will be uh, represented by the Listening SIG. It's a new SIG starting up. And welcome. I will turn the floor over now to our panelists. Hey. Hello. Um, welcome to our JALT Listening SIG. Um, today, there are five of us presenting, and um, we're all of the members of the, the current proposed JALT Listening SIG, which we hope to get up and running early next year. Um, I think we'll all just introduce ourselves in, in the order that you can see on the slide in front of you. So my name is Naheen Madabaka Spring. It's a bit of a long one, it's good for listening practice. Um, I've just come over from New Zealand where um, I was finishing my PhD at Victoria University of Wellington. And I have literally this week just started a job at Nagoya University of Commerce and Business. Over to you, Stuart. <laughs> Uh, hi everyone, my name is uh, Stuart Benson. I'm an associate professor at the University of Aizu in Fukushima. Um, I finished my PhD a year ago and I was actually office mates with Naheen. So I heard about listening for the last three years. So, uh, <laughs> more to come. <laughs> yeah, more to come. Uh, my PhD was actually in vocabulary and I was looking at spoken discourse. And part of the spoken discourse was uh, looking at rugby players and rugby coaches and interviewing them for my needs analysis as part of my PhD. A lot of them said, listening is a major part of spoken discourse and therefore I wanted to join this listening sig help out Naheen and definitely um, understand a bit more about listening and bring it into the classroom on to David which who is not here <laughs> still don't think David's here yet um oh. so I'll come back to David, David he, is, he is here he is yes here. I made it hey David <laughs> <laughs> hello would you like David. us to come back to you or we're just introducing ourselves oh um, sorry, do we have an audience right now? We do. We do. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, my name's David, uh, David Coulson, and I'm living in Kyoto. And um, my area of interest is also vocabulary and vocabulary learning and vocabulary reading, actually. And um, I'm, but I'm interested, since those days, I've become interested in uh, evaluation of all kinds of areas. So. Hey, my name is uh, Mike Crawford. I teach at uh, Tokyo University up in Saitama. Uh, I live in Tokyo, but work in Saitama. Uh, I've been interested in, in teaching listening for the past 10 years or so, although I've been teaching English for, gosh, coming on maybe 30 years now. But uh, in the past 10 years, I've been teaching academic listening at uh, Tokyo. So that's how I sort of got interested. And I've been a JALT member for about 20 years, but I haven't really been that active. Uh, I held a couple of positions, uh, SIG positions, but just for a short time. Uh, so when I heard about this SIG from Naheem, I thought, oh, this is a great chance to sort of get involved again. So I'm, I'm looking forward to working with everybody. Uh, hi, uh, my name's Todd and Todd Bukins. I'm uh, at the other Ritz, the little brother in Beppu. Um, and uh, I am not a researcher, uh, I'm a practitioner, so I've made a bunch of websites to, to learn listening. And I got involved with the ER group that kind of pulled me in because I'm really big on extensive listening. And so I've been dying for a, a listening SIG, and, and, but I'm too lazy to do it myself. So I'm very happy that Naheen took the, took the reins and got this thing started, and I'm really excited. And that's it. Okay, so, so more from us later, um, that gives us a, a brief introduction um, just about the people that are involved. And we'd like to tell you just a little bit more about our proposed SIG now. So with the listening SIG, um, we'll just give you a very brief overview of what the JAS listening SIG is or what we envision it to, envisage it to be. Sorry, I've had a long day. Um, then we'll talk about communication and events. And also we'll um, just give a very brief overview of what we intend to do with the finance and then why hopefully, potentially, um, it would be great to be a JALT Listening SIG member. Um, we'll also just outline what we would like to propose for 2021 and hopefully more after that in 2022. And then we'll um, give out some contact information and there'll be time for questions at the end. So first of all, what is the JALT listening SIG? So it's, we want it to be a place where people can come and talk not only about 
their um, listening research, but any of their interest areas. So we're, we're looking for a place where we can have discussion, where we can collaborate, where we can network. And it's not only for teachers and for teaching, but it's also looking at how we can help our learners um, and have a practical focus, as well as bringing together theory and all of our ideas. We would like maybe for us not only to connect, but we would like this SIG to be an opportunity for people to um, be able to help each other across the country and maybe even um, internationally and to share all their practice and research in, in quite a, 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 an opportunity where they can have different forums and discussion areas or even just with journals and articles, which we'll talk about later in terms of sharing their different practices. So we think that listening is quite a big area and you've heard that we've got very, very different and broad research um, areas of interest. So how can we bring all this together? So I think we can think about listening as an umbrella and then we can think about what our own interest areas are. So some people are quite passionate about listening, but you might also have your own research areas where that can come into um, listening and that umbrella itself. So for example, we can look at how we can assess our learners, how we can help our learners improve. And having um, completed my PhD in listening, I found that bringing those theoretical practices to actual classroom practice can be quite difficult. So really thinking about curriculum development and activities that we can bring and really see our students on a day-to-day -day basis improving their listening. We'd like the, the group to also be the driving force for um, behind both current and future research. So not only thinking about how listening is taught, um, thinking how it is learned in, in different contexts, so not only universities, pre-sessional, general, general English as well, so all the different um, teaching contexts, and also just being able to find out what's going on globally as well, so we're not just limiting ourselves. We'd like to also explore um, digital resources in this world of online and blended teaching. We think that this is a great opportunity to have a look at how digital resources themselves can support teaching um, and other skills in the classroom. So with this being a new SIG, we can think about how that is going to work. So I'll pass you over to Stuart now. Yep, so I, I am the uh, public Publications Chair of the uh, Listening SIG. Nihin go. Click. You have to click, Nihin. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the first one, um, we've been stuck in our houses for the last six months, seven months, eight months, 10 months, six years. I don't know how long we've been stuck in our house because of Corona. But uh, the whole goal was to actually connect as many people as we could, uh, not just in Japan, but all around the world. So the first one is actually, we've made a Facebook page uh, we want to connect with both researchers and teachers. Uh, we're going to uh, regularly post articles um, in form of inform the uh, readers of conferences and other events, and also the um, journal and the newsletter will be going on here as well. Um, we do have an email address. Uh, I will be checking this regularly, um, but everything is connected together. So if you uh, connect, if you want to uh, contact us through the Facebook page or other sites we have, such as the website, you can do that as well. Um, so we have a very basic website. Uh, I think the bigger this uh, SIG gets, the more uh, money we can put into this website and actually make it uh, a lot better and a lot more inviting for people. Uh, so hopefully in the next couple of months, next couple of years, this will be a great website for people to go and find uh, useful publications, articles, uh, then we can have discussion forums. Uh, also, we're going to be making a journal, it's a great name, The Listening Post. Uh, this will be two issues per year, and we'll focus on theory, practice, and integrating other skills. And finally, we'll have a, uh, a e-newsletter. This will create uh, four times a year, and yeah, we'll be focusing on uh, teaching uh, and learning research, and hopefully everyone will be reading this because it will take a lot of work to do. Thank you very much. David. Thank you. Um, yes. Uh, so uh, in the next session, uh, in the next uh, slide, I mean, uh, we are talking about listening SIG events. And um, 
well, we, there's a possibility of holding up to three events a year. Um, uh, one um, are possibly at the Pan SIG Forum. And I see this as a very good thing because the SIG can be a very supportive and also importantly, very productive place for uh, both young researchers and more experienced researchers. And I see one of the really useful things to do is to encourage young researchers to try replication of both teaching methods and a little bit of research if they would like to do that as well. Um, then, uh, fortunately, I live in a very nice, uh, I work in a very nice campus in the uh, north of Kyoto and it's next to um, the Golden Pavilion. So it's a very attractive, beautiful area. And I would hope that if we can gather uh, interested listening researchers to our campus, I can certainly provide free use of facilities, uh, et cetera. And uh, what's good maybe about Kyoto is that there are up to six prefectures all around us. So it's a very urban uh, conurbation. We've got Shiga, Nara, Hyogo, Mie, Osaka, Fukui really nearby. And of course, um, uh, you know, from other places as well, it's really convenient to get here. Um, so I would be very, very interested in doing that and supporting anybody who joins in uh, to help their professional development. Thank you. Okay, Mike. Well, yeah, at this point, there's probably not a whole lot to talk about related to finance because uh, we're just sort of getting started now. Uh, but obviously our main revenue is going to be from membership. So obviously we want to get as many people as we can, but it sounds from like, uh, from what Todd was saying that we have a nice pool to draw from. So we should be able to get, you know, as he, as he said, about 50 members pretty soon and hopefully it'll grow even more after that. Um, so that's the main source of revenue. I, I can't really remember how this works. I was actually the treasurer for the teacher education SIG about 15 years ago. <laughs> I know people pay 2,000 yen to join a SIG. I don't know if all that money comes to us or somebody, if Jout National keeps some of it. I don't really know how it works, but uh, I'll, I'll need to learn. But uh, anyway, that is our, our main source of uh, revenue, of course. And uh, we have lots of events planned as we were hearing. So um, it's possible that non-members will be coming to our events. And in that case, obviously, you know, we will be probably be charging them a small amount. So uh, that is another possible source of income. And uh, things like sponsorship, if we if we get to you know to be a pretty big SIG, which is a possibility, I think, uh, then we might have uh, publishers and so on uh, possibly considering uh, sponsoring our uh, activities. So that's that's another possible stream. And obviously, this will be going into the conferences that we are going to be having and publications. So uh, yeah, but we we sort of have to wait until <laughs> things get rolling before we, we learn the details of this. But uh, I'm looking forward to refreshing my memory. I guess probably things have changed in 15 years, but uh, anyway, I'll be I'll be uh, doing that part of the the, the work for the SIG. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Hey, Todd. Uh, yeah. Hi. Thanks, Naheen. Yeah. So, why would you want to join the uh, Jolt Listening SIG? Um, I can. Yeah. So, the one of the main reasons is um, we can connect, uh, <laughs> create a network with our teacher colleagues. One thing that's quite unique about the listening SIG actually is we're kind of the missing piece of like four or five other SIGs. So we really link in well with call. We really link in well with extensive reading. We really link in well with CLIL um, and vocabulary. So I think it's kind of a nice way that we can join with other SIGs. Uh, of course, we're gonna have our newsletter. Um, people can get that, that would be really nice. Uh, then we can get submissions, people um, doing research articles and, and submitting to the listening post. So that would be another reason. And of course, we're gonna have some fun events. We're just gonna knock the roof off. You can't wait <laughs> until we have those. And then uh, we can share ideas on social uh, networks. Actually, that's my specialty. So we hope to do a lot of um, uh, like digital training, how to do listening in different ways with different devices, different free tools. Uh, obviously collaborate with other researchers like my friend Joseph way out there in Sweden. So we're gonna be trans. Uh, Trans Globe or whatever international, and then also again just networking opportunities, and that's it. Thank you. 
So we have um, some plans for 2021 pending COVID and everything else. Um, so our timeline at the moment looks like we will hopefully um, get our membership. We have already looked at proposing our events and also thinking about our different roles if you, as you just heard. So we're looking at proposing the listening SIG um, in February, 2021. And if everything goes to plan, um, will be a fully functional SIG by March 2021. Um, and within that time frame, hopefully we'll get our first e-newsletter out in May 2021. So I, I think that this is going to be more like an email bulletin. Um, so and then we can just kind of catch up four times a year with our members um, by email and just say what's going on and then kind of point them towards the right direction of things that have, have come to light in the last few months, whether that be on our actual Facebook page or our website or about an event that's coming up. Um, June 2021 will hopefully be our first one day conference. So um, we're already looking, as David mentioned, uh, about holding that in Kyoto, hopefully. So maybe we'll, we'll be able to get out and about by then, but if not, it may be online or it could be blended, but we're, we're already looking for listeners um, um, or, and in people to present as well. Um, so we are looking at our speakers and plenary speakers and contributors for that already. The listening post we are hoping to have out in July 2021. So that's our first issue, which we would have penciled in. Um, so as soon as we even before um, we send in our proposal in February, if anybody is interested in writing an article, um, obviously that's a longer process. So we are looking for submissions ASAP if you are interested. Um, this time next year will be JALP 2021. So we are hoping to have the listening forum at the International JALP Conference. So hopefully this time next year will be much bigger and there'll be a lot more to report on. And also we can, we can unveil all of our big plans for 2022. So this is um, a little bit about us. So exactly the same as the first page. I already came in halfway through, but um, so here are our current locations and what we are proposing to do in terms of our roles for the listening stick. And you can get in touch with us, whether it's to contribute to the listening post, as I said, we're, we're happy to hear ideas or to um, talk about contributions already. If you would like to present at a future conference, which should take place next summer, hopefully, um, or to join the PANSIG, join our team. So there are only five of us at the moment. So as you can see in certain places, there, there's um, a lot of hopefully, potentially interest areas for different people, whether that be for publicity, um, if you're very good at websites, great, because I'm not, um, or members at large. So if you, if you are interested in another area and you would like to get involved, please let us know, of course. So we are, of course, looking for members. Um, Todd, I know, has been speaking to some people already, um, but feel free to contact us and we'd be happy to hear from you um, if you would like to find out more from us as well. Okay, I think that's it. So over to the floor for any questions, unless anyone's got anything else to add. Yes, yeah, so first I would just like to say, uh, can we give them a nice round of applause for the new SIG? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Go <for it. laughs> excellent, excellent presentation. So we will open up the floor now for questions. Uh, feel free to turn off your microphone and ask questions. Uh, uh, to the, the panel. Yeah, actually, yeah, I would like to speak up. First thing, I'm very happy that ListenSIG uh, actually formed in 2015, 14, 15. I had a kind of try to activity with BainSIG and other SIGs to use it and the ERSIG. And I was thinking maybe ERSIG could be extensive reading, extensive listening about this one. And this was a lady from New Zealand. I forgot her name. She initiated this kind of listening uh, activities in 2014 and 15. And uh, yeah, I can find out the name I presented there. And uh, yeah, I'm very much interested. Uh, I'm not teaching English, I'm teaching German. So I would be very much interested if this is not only English. Uh, yeah. And um, um, one thing. Second thing is uh, to form a SIG. 
you had to you do need the 30 signatures and beforehand and there's a timing you really have to take care of and uh, you should take care of the conference in february is the second weekend uh, February 13, 14, the EBM, you need to have these things two or three weeks before them. And uh, I will be PANSIC conference chair next year for PANSIC uh, in May, in, uh, and we are in the team. So if you are interested, you I can send you the link and you can fill in it. And yeah. Um, and the other thing is, uh, I'm not this person, but I know that in JALT, in the EBM, there is kind of uh, not getting more six. So there could be that a lot of people are opposing. Um, yeah, you should really be prepared if you want to convince the EBM. Okay. Um, yeah, um, another thing is about the finances. In the first year, you may get a, 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 a get up a grant or something like this, maybe uh, 80,000, 100,000 yen or something like this. The income per year is from the, as a SIG, depending on the members, could be between 60,000 and maybe 150,000 per year. So, and normally when we have the PANSIC on site, not online, you get a share if you take part in the PANSIC. This is the two incomes you have. All other incomes you have to take care of yourself and uh, this is the range what you can get as a SIG, uh, depending on membership and what you have, uh, what you need to do. Um, yes. Um, Gabriella, may yeah? I? Thank you very much for those comments, Gabriella. They're really, really helpful. Yeah. And um, nice to meet you. Nice and to meet just you. Um, one point that you said I was going to re uh, reply to. Um, I think it's really important to be inclusive of other languages as well. Um, we know that a lot of people are teaching different languages in Japan now, and the perspectives and the insights of uh, you know, different situations are really important. Um, personally, we have a lot of students uh, of teaching Japanese, and I would hope that this venue would be a great venue for them to come and do some early stage presentations. Um, I think what you just said, I completely agree with it. Yeah, actually, um, uh, I'm checking. Can you hear me? It's my, my, my phone. Uh, first, as membership chair, Gabriella, we need you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, help. I hope you can join I us. I set I up like... several SIGs. I help with icicle SIG. I help with brain SIG. I help my own SIG. So I know what's going on in child oh. and how they discuss and what's coming up. I really what's know. What's your SIG, Gabriella? Hmm? What's your SIG? Several NLP SIG. Oh, yeah. You can. I can I can tell you how much how much confrontative forms there were and we had really a hardship in the first years a really a hardship. Wow. Oh, but wow. you can hunt them down. Yeah, you must be better. Then it's, uh, it's no problem. Mm -hmm. And also just uh, to agree with what David said, I actually might you know like I said I'm a practitioner and, and I love like technology. I've made sites to learn French, um, Spanish, and Japanese, and so I would love to work with the teachers of other languages and. And really working on from the technical side. I mean, that's actually my interest is the technical side, and it doesn't wow. matter what language it is. Oh. So, um, yeah, I'm really, really excited about that. Um, yeah, I have, I have a bunch of colleagues I'm working with who are interested in listening, but they are maybe not in this group. So maybe yeah, I try to contact them. Oh, thank you, thank you. And actually, can I get your contact information by any chance, maybe yes. in, in the chat? Or I can give you mine. Maybe that's better than you can write me. So it's more it's more private. So you can write me here. This is my uh, my university account. Just, okay. just to add one comment. I mean, in the oh, age of was, EMI um, or medium instruction, perhaps listening is among the four skills, maybe the single most important skill, because if you can't understand anything, you're not learning. Listening is first, we lead, listening is first. There's no yeah. discussion about anything else. Listening is first. We learn language through listening. Nobody yeah. else point and no, no, that's, oh, oh sorry. <laughs> I, I agree, I, I agree. I, get, I, get, I really get emotional about this. Same thing. passion, I have the same passion. For myself. Yeah. I really get emotional about this. Mm. Yeah. So Gabriella, um, Stuart uh, brought up a question in the chat about what exactly could they do as a SIG to help 
sway the vote at the EBM uh, for the SIG? If you could offer them any advice. Um, the EBM is the set of all other six of all chapters of the board of directors and all people and the, <coughs> the EBM is deciding things. So they have to decide on vote if it's up or if it's down. And you need this is why it's very important to have to be careful with requirements, formal requirements. They are very much on formal requirements. This is not, this is US style communication. Maybe some of you can don't know. I'm a European, I think different. And, uh, but they have a, a kind of a procedure and you have just to, to keep track of this procedure. That's why I say you really have to be aware of it. And you have to have good arguments that you get a lot of members. Some, some, many six are st stuck with maybe 50 or 80. Maybe there are some with 100 or 200 and so on. And uh, we have already 28 six. So you have really to make a point that you get enough members who are interested in supporting the sick and make it a vital part of JALT. It's like, uh, Child protects you, but you have to give child. It's a give and take uh, part, and you have to really be, uh, yeah, you yeah should stand up and with a clear voice state what you want to do. Yeah, and maybe Nahin is a good good match. Yeah, and uh, maybe someone else with clear clear cut instructions. <laughs> yeah. Stuart McLean, I hope that that answered your question. I, I just noticed we have two Stuarts here, and I only said Stuart. That was Stuart, Stuart McLean. Uh, I hope that answered his question. Mm. Well, thanks for your advice, Gabriella. I mean, um, yeah, we, we've we already thought about, you know, what kind yeah. of number we did for, for for our members, for our proposed membership anyway. Um, so we're, we're kind of aiming high. I would have said 100, but I think I would have scared, scared off some people, especially Todd. So, <laughs> um, so, so yeah, we are working on that, but thank you. And I suppose we should probably clarify what EBM stands for. It stands for the executive board meeting that our parent organization holds several three times a year and where decisions for the whole organization are made in a unanimous way. And this is an open mic, so feel free to unmute yourself and uh, help the SIG out, give them some information, ask them some questions, get them ready for uh, the EBM. Joseph. Yeah, hi everybody. Thanks very much to uh, the organizers for the energy here. Uh, like, like some have mentioned before, I'm very interested in listening, but maybe didn't have the drive to actually get something started, but I'm happy to hold on to coattails. So thanks very much to everybody. Uh, I've got just a, a few ideas uh, that, that might help with contacts and networking. You're starting a Facebook page, that's great. I wonder if there are SIGs and other organizations similar to JOLT that focus on listening. I'm not sure if IA TEFL has a listening SIG or if, if other organizations like that, um, if they have listening SIGs or maybe uh, SIGs that focus on receptive skills. If we can try to connect to those, then there might be more members who are already members of uh, other similar SIGs or do some kind of collaboration with other SIGs that are interested in the same thing. That was one idea. And then uh, with these great sounding newsletters and events, uh, I can think of lots of different targeted subtopics that I would imagine many uh, of us and also our colleagues might be particularly interested in. It's a good start to say listening, this is the listening SIG of course, but then like if the events have, or, or, and or the publications and or the newsletters have like some specific target, like materials for listening, Nahin, Todd, I know you're experts in that area. And then if, and then if another specific target was assessment for listening, right. and then another specific target was one-way and two-way listening or academic listening. Uh, some of you know I'm interested in note-taking. That could be another, or, or listening for academic purposes. So I could see, uh, just, just for myself, it being very attractive if there was a specific 
focus for at least some of these publications or events rather than starting with listening. It's sure. probably things that, that all of us at this meeting already agree. Listening is very important. Listening is a challenging skill to teach. Y yes, agreed. Let's move on from that. And, and then gets to like the actual issue, problem, uh, things that can support teachers, students, researchers. But that would be very attractive to me if I saw listening SIG and then colon and then some particular focus. Ah, okay, great. We, we can get rid of kind of all the background that is already accepted, I, I, one would think for people who are in a listening seat. Okay. Yeah, thanks for letting me share. No, thank you. Um, yeah, definitely subtopics and we need some kind of focus. We, we want to bring in everybody's interest and as we all know, umbrella, like listening is a, a huge umbrella. So yeah, um, being able to, that, those are some great ideas, Joe. thank you. So looking at vocab assessment, definitely some ideas there. Oh, I just shared in the chat um, the JASIT SIG list. Yeah. So they have a listening SIG as well. And something the Domestic Affairs Committee was talking about last night was trying to partner up more with other domestic groups. So this might be a, a good opportunity to kind of get in contact with their SIG, see what they're doing and things like that too. Okay. But um, to kind of build on what Stuart was saying, uh, Stuart McLean was saying about what do you need to do to convince the EBM, I think maybe preparing strategically on how the EBM may push back and say, well, we already have this SIG, we already have this SIG, how is the, how is the listening SIG going to provide something different? So mm -hmm. like some people may push back and say, well, we have extensive reading. That's basically the same, right? I, I'm not saying I think that, but somebody may say that, but how would you deal with that kind of pushback from a few different directions, maybe the most similar SIGs and what would be distinctive about this SIG would probably help you in that situation or that preparation a lot. Um, that's a really good point, Patrick. Thank you. I think, um, you know, JOUT has an extremely good function to play in maybe early researcher development. Um, and that would maybe be a distinction from JASIT, which is maybe a bit more mature, maybe a bit more advanced. And so I, I, I see, you know, the if we can hold conferences where people can make early stage presentations reassured that they're not going to get torn to pieces, um, that's really where we can position ourselves, I think. Oh, okay. I meant within JALT rather than as opposed to other SIGs. I think the fact that JASET has a listening SIG would be something you could bring to the table and say, well, it's been deemed useful and essential in this situation. But I think the EBM may push back and say, we already have 28 SIGs. And these are the ones that seem like we already have what listening does covered. I mean, I think, you know, one of the, one of the biggest gaps is, is obviously that the jout, the existing jout SIGs have kind of your reading, your writing, your speaking. So there is a notable gap for listening. Um, so, so obviously that one is just there and it's glaring. Um, but I think just what would make it distinctive, um, just given that we have gone into this this online world so we do have more of a blended platform now which i think possibly um listening lends itself to more i'm not saying that reading doesn't but you know just reading on a screen um is you can there's so many more possibilities with listening and and then you know you can also bring in the the technology aspect and you can really bring in those innovations whether it's just going to be just audio or whether it's going to be different websites students love to go home and just kind of play around with netflix youtube and all of those different things there so wouldn't it be great if they knew how to use them and to help them progress in their language learning in in a different language so those would be my main distinctive points i think I think the technology part is a, bit, a really big part because say like 30 years ago, we're kind of dependent on print media for teaching right? for the most part, unless you had the money to buy lots of CDs and stuff. But now listening has become a lot more accessible. So that could be another reasoning for having a signal. But I think Stuart wanted to say something. You had your hand up, Stuart McLean? 
I pass the baton to you. Yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, just some ideas. I don't think there is a speaking SIG. There isn't actually a reading SIG. And I fear there might not even be a writing SIG. Okay. So reading SIG. Is it reading or extensive reading? Extensive reading. Extensive re okay, um, I'm into extensive reading, but my fear is that, and this is an issue with vocabulary, listening, like reading and writing and speaking, are so essential that getting people to come to a conference or to specialise in it is a problem. Like, cool has a very clear identity, yeah? Mm -hmm. As great, as, as, as important as I think listening is, getting people to go to a listen conference might be difficult. So this is just a suggestion from a single individual. One idea might be, and I, I'm a big fan of the Vocab SIG conference, is that we all gather in a single room. We have only eight presentations all day. And that can guarantee, that basically means that the, present, the quality of the presentations is um, on average higher than other SIGs. Like if I go to the ER SIG, we have eight parallel um, uh, presentations with probably three or four people in each room. At the vocab seek, we are all in one room. We, ma we manage to gather high quality presenters and we have two discussants who would then discuss the four presentations. And because we pull in, I would like to think, high quality discussions and high quality presenters, our SIG does quite well despite being a despite having probably the same, possibly the same issue listening will have is that vocabulary is essential, listening is essential, but it's, it doesn't have a clear single identity that like, like some of the other six do. So that might be a good way to pull people in at the very beginning. And if we want to kind of, um, I think it was the other Stuart, no, it was Joseph. Joseph was talking about the, maybe having a, um, a clear identity for a certain conference we split the day into maybe testing learning or corpus linguistics learning. So it's not just vocabulary, which is really broad. It is, it has a clear, the morning and the afternoon has a clear identity. Okay, thank you. And I, I think we can also think, do um, special issues as well. So I think that's a great one to do. Instead of just having one journal, I think having special issues focusing on, like, for, for example, vocabulary and listening or call and listening and having special issues will help quite a lot with that. So I, I just feel that there is no speaking, reading or writing seek mm -hmm. because they're essential and, and therefore it doesn't have that clear identity. Therefore, getting a listening seek might be difficult but it's so clearly obvious. And if they say there's an ER SIG, we don't need a listening SIG, um, I would question their knowledge of SLA. <laughs> okay, thanks for the info. So yeah, okay. I need to check my SIG list. ER journal, there were sometimes articles on extensive listening, not much, but some of them. No? And there's another guy, maybe you know him, uh, Goldman? Uh, Goldberg. A gold, what is his name? Goldberg. Oh. Oh, Goldberg. Goldberg? Maybe, yes, something with gold. And uh, he is, he's uh, an, a listening freak too. He does extensive listening, but he's actually a, f a listening freak. Yeah. That's probably called Paul Goldberg. Although he yeah, runs X Reading, yeah. his PhD was meant to be on listening. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Well, I, I have been talking to the um, coordinator at Extensive Reading as well. So she's she's been kept informed with what we are doing and we are trying to, to be distinctive. So, um, you know, we don't want to do anything that they're doing already and um, we want to know what their interest is. So, so they're quite interested in working together with us as well and having joint conferences and events. So people who would be interested in extensive reading would possibly be interested in listening as well. So yeah, um, we are keeping them informed of what we're planning as well. 
I think as a member of the ER SIG, something I would be most interested in is kind of how extensive listening could be implemented because it's kind of like a really simplistic view. Well, you just do the same thing as extensive reading, but with audio. Yeah. And that's not the case, right? <laughs> so I think being able to show those differences could also be really interesting and helpful for people that are involved in reading and things like that too. So you might get some people that want to double dip on two SIGs. Yeah, maybe you can check the, the, the from the last conference, this child conference is the, the handbook and they have like behind the category, like maybe on listening and so you can find how many presentations were on the topic and so. Like, or then maybe, I don't know if you include phonetics or other things like that, or like in the brain research, in the brain sick, there were some presentations on listening. It's okay. Oh. Have, have a look as well. Yeah, I'd just like to add on to that. I'm really big in the, the extensive reading group as well. And actually I was brought in by Rob Warren because he was following what I was doing in extensive listening. And he was like, you're the only one that's really was, that was doing it for, I've been doing it for 15 years, you know, my websites that I run. Uh, and I actually, I'm I, asking the question to you because uh, I have not been that active in JOLT. I've been kind of, I present a lot. I go to a lot of international conferences, but I've been very um, cautious about stepping on people's toes, other SIGs, promoting this SIG. I don't really know the protocol about how to do it. So because I'm a little inexperienced, <laughs> I'm actually, I'm very inexperienced with this. I didn't want to just like post on extensive reading, hey, join our SIG and make it seem like I'm poaching other people from other SIGs. So um, if anybody has any ideas about that, this seems like we have a lot of experience in this room about how to go about it. I know that I can contact the chapters directly, but like how to coordinate with other SIGs and not seem like I'm trying to poach their, their free members. I think that's where I probably have to come in. Um... Let me be fair about this. I've been spotlighting everyone. <laughs> so uh, it brings them into the to the main picture so that everyone can see them. I, as the SIG uh, representative liaisons, part of my job is to coordinate with the SIGs and to have them work together. And there's a lot of things that we are doing in collaboration among SIGs. So Todd, I don't think that you have to worry about that. I think you, the SIGs will probably welcome you. And especially when it comes to um, shared events, shared funds, sponsoring people, there's a lot of room where we have uh, room for collaboration amongst the, the other 28 SIGs. So um, I will put my email in the, in the chat. And if you need anything, um, Nahin, she already has it, but then you guys can contact me and I'll t I can represent you at the EBM or in some other way. Okay, thank you. Just real quick, um, thanks so much. That's, that's valuable, David. Uh, what about like recruiting? Like would I, would I be doing something inappropriate by saying, hey, we have a new SIG if you'd like to join that other SIGs might feel threatened that like I'm lowering their numbers? No, not at all. In fact, you're not limited to one SIG. You, you can, when you join JALT and you, as a national member and you pay 13,000, you can choose one SIG. You get one SIG for free. Right. Every other SIG though, you can add on. There's no limit for an additional 2,000 yen. Okay, and yeah. Many, yeah. Right, okay. and many people in the room are multi-SIG um, members. Right. No, I, I actually, I am too. I'm in many SIGs, but my, my fear was that if I, like, as you get the one free SIG, and that the other SIGs will be like, hey, you're trying to steal our free member. You know? I don't like, think so at all, Todd. Um, okay. If you were to go out and say, hey, you could always quit that SIG and join ours, <laughs> that was where you would be stepping on toes. Okay. But just recruiting people, like um, Glenn was saying before, it, it's just two coffees mm. to join a SIG. So it's, it's not that big a deal. So just go, if you're interested, go out and join it. Okay, great. That's awesome. Thank you. Thanks to both of you. Just one thing. When, 
when whoever speaks to the EDM speaks to the EDM, surely if listening is a category within the JELT National Conference, we need a listening SIG. It seems logical, yeah? Mm -hmm. And there is one for the JELT National Conference. And there has been for many years. Yeah. So starting a listening SIG just seems um, the natural next step. Yeah, because I think this on Eventzilla is all the presentations this week that are considered listening presentations. Just drop that in the chat. Yeah, and another thing I think having, that's such a great point, Stuart, actually, that's so true because I almost only present on listening. And usually the sessions are very well attended. Almost everybody that does listening, usually it's pretty well attended. And I think a lot of people don't present because there's not, we don't have this SIG that's kind of reinforcing it. So um, yeah, that's, all, that's a great point. I, I just noticed that um, one of the the presentation at the bottom of the link to the listening in for this week includes um, uh, Yo Ham Hamada, Hamada Yo Sensei. And, you know, shadowing is something that has really taken root within Japan and before spreading worldwide. It's, you know, definitely people like Hamada Sensei, if they, the quality of people like him, if they were to speak on, you know, and if we were to be able to present to the, uh, organization a plan to invite people out to come and speak i think that would uh, strengthen the validity of the organization but I, I would caution against sort of having it turn too quickly into a sort of a highly specialized um i i think my, my feeling again I, i'm repeating myself but my feeling is that you know, JAL is really um, useful for people who are um, maybe pre or doing their master degree, maybe post master degree as well. And um, uh, um, I think the supportiveness and maybe as Stuart said, you know, those supportive um, conferences where rather than parallel sessions. And I think including that as part of the identity DNA of the uh, of the SIG would be a very Good idea. The, the vocab sig only has um, Saturday conferences, so you can actually have fun Saturday night and not right. worry about Sunday. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Um, but yeah, but it needs to be inclusive for sure. We don't want we don't want to be a holdout for, um, you know. Um, overtly specialist people, we want it to be um, inclusive. Yeah. If I might uh, interject uh, two, two things. First, we have about seven more minutes. The other thing is uh, you've probably noticed that each SIG has an M, uh, a logo. Have you thought about one? I have not mentioned a logo in any of our meetings. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I think a bit of drawing. You can do it. We, we, can, we were kind of working just on the proposal and the ideas and the outline. So yeah, maybe, maybe we've kind of forgotten about the logo, but hopefully we can, we can get one going. Can anyone in our group draw? <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people outsource them because we are educators normally and not designers per se. Exactly that. <laughs> That's good. That makes me feel better. But yeah, um, another good point. So we've, we've got a few months to work on that. <laughs> Maybe we should ask some of our students. I've got some students who are pretty good artists, you know, they seem to be really good at doodling and drawing in their notebooks and stuff like that. <laughs> That's true. That <laughs> yeah. uh, actually, you could make that into some kind of small project for a class where you design a logo and present. So you take the kind of requirements, what this logo is supposed to represent and 
the students give a presentation on why they made that logo. And then uh, the winner of any competition gets some kind of bonus. They get to join the listening sig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pre conference pass right. or something like that. <laughs> uh, just one I'm... last thing. I'm sorry if I need to add. I, I sent this link out last week just briefly, and then we had some people sign up. Some people here have already signed up, but if you are interested, this is just for us to collect addresses of people who would love. Uh, who are interested in the SIG, um, and we would really appreciate it. So it's in the chat box um, if you would like to submit it. Done. Yeah. I, I think I, I might have done it, it twice. I've also <laughs> put in our, um, our current just email. I mean, you can obviously contact us individually as well. If you, if you know us, have our emails, but there's the Jout Listening SIG Gmail in there, and also our very, very, just um, very, very pre-website kind of tabs and things at the moment. We do need to work on that. Um, I do apologize. <laughs> but some members of our audience are fairly quiet. Um, please do not be shy. I do not have to spotlight you necessarily, but uh, feel free to, if you have any questions about listening, uh, we have the experts in the room. So this would be a good time. I'm afraid I actually have to leave because my last bus is in about eight minutes. So um, as much as I love my office, I really do not want to spend the evening here tonight. <laughs> so so um, if you do have any questions, please let us know. Um, thank you everyone for joining. Um, I think, thank you Grant, I'm sure you will officially close things momentarily. But um, I would like to say thank you for your time tonight and um, we do hope to be up and running um, after the next e EBM and hopefully we'll see some of you face to face or online again when, when we are a SIG, we're gonna stay positive when we are a SIG in, in March and at some of our events next year. So thank you. Well, before you leave, if I, I could just end the recording here, I, I would like everyone to unmute yourself if you can, and let's let's just give a good round of applause. It's always a, a good thing to do at the end. Thank you. Look forward to the new SIG. Thank you Yay. for your ideas. <laughs>